Hello sir, the main title of our project is Comparative Analysis of Google Translator and AI for Bharat Translator with a tagline A Translation Technology Study. Now introducing our team, myself Chandrika with role number 21BDS003 and Sai 21BDS012, Vinay 21BDS056. Now coming to the overview of Google Translator and AI for Bharat. Google Translate stands out as a global translation powerhouse, boosting support for over 100 languages. Its strength lies in providing widespread linguistic coverage, facilitating communication on a global scale. And on the other hand, AI for Bharat Translator is dedicated to the linguistic diversity of India, concentrating on the 22 scheduled languages, which encompass various scripts, including those for low resource languages. Its focus is on catering specifically to the linguistic landscape of India, emphasizing local languages and their unique challenges. We have already provided the links for the Google Translator and AI for Bharat Translator. Now coming to the problem statement. Can we discover more efficient alternatives to Google Translator considering its limitations with low resource and specific Indian languages? And how do these alternatives fare in terms of precision and contextual understanding with the goal of providing superior translations in various linguistic scenarios? Now, working on this problem statement, the motivation for choosing AI for Bharat Translator over Google Translator is driven by two main factors. The limitations of Google Translator in handling low resource languages and the need for accurate translation in Indian languages. AI for Bharat Translator offers a more comprehensive and effective solution for cross-lingual communication, specifically addressing the challenges faced in translating low resource languages. Myself R Vinay Kumar, 21 BDS 056. So let's know about this training methods of Google Translator. Google Translate relies on NMT which stands for Neural Machine Translator. NMT utilizes artificial neural networks that have been trained on extensive bilingual text data. Through this training, these networks acquire an understanding of the connections between words and phrases in the different languages. Consequently, they are capable of producing translations that are not only more authentic but also more precise compared to conventional approaches. Now we'll talk about SMT that is statical machine translation. Although NMT is currently the prevailing method, SMT continues to have significance within Google Translate. SMT relies on statical analysis of extensive parallel text collection to recognize patterns and perform translation accordingly. Differences between NMT and SMT. Mechanism in NMT is to translate all the sentences at a time, but in SMT translate word by word. NMT often utilizes deep learning models like RNN or transformer for attentional decode and encode networks. SMT uses phase based or word based models. NMT undoubtedly handling multilingual translation and adapting to diverse domains through shared parameters and contextual learning. SMT face challenges in managing multiple languages and domains often requiring separate models and significant retraining. NMT models are tend to handle rare words better and capturing meanings effectively. Whereas in SMT, may struggle with rare words and facing challenges in translating accurately. These are the some records of Hindi and English columns are in our dataset. Using the Google Translator on the Hindi column, we got this result as English trans column. So these are the records. So next, we'll talk about the training methods of AI for Bharat. Transformer based multilingual NMT. This model uses the powerful transformer architecture originally developed for Google Translate, but specifically tailored for Indic languages. It also allows for parallelized processing and attention mechanisms, leading to faster training and better performance. Multilingual The model was trained using a vast dataset of parallel text 
from all 22 scheduled Indian languages as well as English. This allows it to learn the relationships between languages and produce reliable translations. Now we'll talk about script unification. Indic trans to use a script integration whenever possible to improve the use of word commonly across languages. This requires turning languages with unique scripts such as Kashmiri, Manipuri and Sindhi into a common script such as Devangri prior to translation and then converting them back after translation. These are some records of Hindi and English columns are in, our, are in the dataset. Using AA for Bharat on Hindi column, we got this result as the column AA for Bharat trans. So these are the records. So my name is Srinivas and my roll number is 21BDS012. Now I am going to explain about the architectures of Google Translator and AI for Bharat Translator. So coming to the architecture of Google Translator. So in Google Translator, the translation models like NMT and SMTs are common. NMT which means Neural Machine Translation and SMT which means Statistical Machine Translation. These are the main two architectures in which an encoder and a decoder are present. The encoder condenses the information from the original text while the decoder uses this condensed information to produce the translated text. Then we can see that attention mechanism. The attention mechanism is a key feature in NMT which helps to improve the translation quality by allowing the decoder to pay more attention to specific parts of the original text while generating the translation and making the process more accurate and more fluent. So then we move to multi-layer perceptron. So a multi-layer perceptron is a component shared by both NMT and SMT. It plays a role in processing the condensed information from the encoded text to produce the final translated output. And many of them are familiar with the keyword LSTM which means long short term memory networks. In NMT's LSTM networks a type of RNA networks which means new recurrent neural networks are employed to understand the longer connections and dependencies in the source language text. This is a crucial for accurately translating integrated sentences ensuring that the model can capture nonsense meanings and context during the translation process. Now we can see the components of NMT which are encoders and decoders. In encoders we can see the embedding layer and RNN cells but in decoder it is opposite which are RNN cells appears first and then appears the embedding layer. This is the main architecture of the Google Translator. So now moving on to the Indic Trans2 which means AI for Bharat model architecture. Again the same one encoder and decoder architecture. In Indic Trans2 similar to the Google Translator uses an encoder decoder architecture. The encoder condenses the original text and the decoder uses this condensed information to create the translated text again. So then moving on to the multi head attention. Here, Multi-head attention lets the decoder focuses on various parts of the original text, improving context awareness in translation. Then performing the positional encoding. Additionally, positional encoding aids the model in understanding the word order in sentences, particularly helpful for accurately translating languages with integrated syntax such as Hindi and Urdu, etc. So moving on to the final one, which is known as residual connections. So residual connections in a model like in Indic Trans2 enable the learning of long range dependencies in the text. This means the model can better capture relationship between words in longer sentences, ultimately enhancing the accuracy of translations for more complex and extended linguistic structures. So we can see the architecture of the AI for Bharat 2. It is a simple architecture compared to the Google Translator. So we can see there are encoders and decoders. In this we use 18 encoders and 18 decoders for tra translating Indic language to English or English language to Indic. So then moving on. Okay, finally we have translated the Hindi text into the English text. How can we compare like which translator are converted as given best meaning for the sentence. So for this we follow STS course. What is STS? STS means nothing but a semantic textual, textual similarity. STS course quantify the semantic similarity between two text sentences which means measuring how closely the meaning of two sentences aligns. So how it is calculated. 
like through embeddings the text is converted into numerical representations known as embeddings in a high dimensional space this transformation captures the semantic meaning of the text then we move on to similarity measure a mathematical formula such as cosine similarity is applied to calculate the distance between the embeddings this measures how similar or dissimilar the meanings of the text are then we move on to normalization the calculated distance is then normalized into a score ranging from 0 to 1 a score of 0 indicates no similarity while a score of 1 signifies perfect similarity this normalization step provides a standardized measure of the similarity between the texts so this i explained previously which means 0 0 0.5 and 1 this is the score interpretation 0 means no semantic similarity at all moderate level means 0 0.5 and if it is 1 then it is the perfect semantic similarities there are many benefits of this cosine similarity which means also sts scores focuses on meanings human like evaluation and comparative analysis and target improvement after this let us look on the results what we got so we can see here the english which is the original sentence and english trans which is the google translated sentence and ai4 bharat trans which means ai4 bharat translated sentence after calculating the sts scores for google trans we got the column score for Google Trans. After calculating the score for AI for Bharat, we got the score for AI for Bharat. And comparing, comparingly, we can see here, almost every record is supporting AI for Bharat Translator. Like this, we can conclude the results after performing this process on many data sets. So, thank you. Now we are going to explain how we have done this work and how the code works, how the Google Translator is working, how the AFO bar translating working and how we are calculating the scores through Google Collab. So now coming to the Collab, we will see the execution, how the Google Translator works and how AFO bar translator works. Here we can see we just uh, installed the Google Translator. So using the Google Translator, we have imported a translator and we have make a source language as Hindi and destination language as Hindi from which text to which uh, to which text we need to convert we need to specify here and then we will pass the Hindi text and the output English trans which is translated by the Google trans is here so then coming to the AI for bar translator we need to install all the different packages from the github etc so we have installed all the packages and AI for bar Hindi trans etc so from these packages we need to import the model which can be done through fair seq so this after installing indic 2 en then we will import the model from it so which is known as indic trans model and then after initiating the model we just need to write a function for translating which text to which text here we define it as hindi to english then just running this function it returns nothing because we need to give the data set again and then after giving the data set we need to pass each and every column to that definition which we given as a translation for AI4 bar translator. So by translations, we have got all the 10 records because I have just put df is equal to head of 10 means it translates only the first 10 records and the translated records are shown here. So in the text which is trans original text is English one and the translator which is done by Google is here and the translation which is done by AI4 Bharat is here. So then coming to the score similarity test score which we need to compare between the google translator and ai for bar translator so this semantic test score is calculated through cosine similarity which is explained in this code this, this cosine similarity is explained in this definition which is known as sentence similarity we have pre-processed the text today perform different pre-processing steps and again join them and then perform the cosine similarity and calculated the text so by this we can calculate the STS score for the Google Translator and by this we can calculate the STS score for the AFO bar translator and after performing it just we will see the how scores have been produced like this the score extra column has been added for the Google Trans text and STS score is added for the AFO bar translator text so like this we performed the translation which translator is best for translating from Indic languages to English, we can say that almost AI4 Bharat translator has got best accuracy for almost all the records compared to the Google translator. And thank you.